Good evening, everyone. Um, I'm Wendy Sims Moten, um, Vice President of the Santa Barbara Unified School District, calling and actually resuming the regular meeting of July 19th, 2022. And so I want to call us to order, and I want back into the regular session, and I will make an announcement from our cl uh, closed session. And we did not have any public comments from closed session. The board voted unanimously 3-0 with two. We haven't come, at, I'm announcing from the closed session according to our agenda. Mm -hmm. Ms. Board, are you okay? Okay. I did open the meeting, resuming from closed session. Okay, we're good. Yes. Yes. So, were we good? Wait, wait. Language access is number two. American Sign Language, number three. Yeah. So we're resuming the meeting. Okay, coming good. Into closed I just session. thought it should be translated. Okay, so you know that's a good part about you know having girls got your back. Okay, so I'll go with that. So now that we're going to resume session, we will now return to the regular session. We will open the meeting. There's no virtual comments, and now we we'll have language access. Thank you. Testing, testing. Okay, thank you, Mrs. Smoten. Good afternoon, everybody. Just wanted to remind everyone that we will be providing simultaneous interpretation into Spanish and also into English. If you will be needing interpretation into English, just remember to click on the globe icon on the bottom right of your screen and select English. And if you're on your phone or your iPad, just locate the three dot menu, select language interpretation, then click English, and then done. And for this meeting, we will also be providing um, American Sign Language interpretation. If you will be using ASL interpretation, just use the Zoom app on your computer, phone, or tablet. If you will be joining the meeting through your web browser, you may not be able to see the ASL interpreter at all times. Buenas tardes a todos. Queremos recordarles que para esta reunión vamos a tener interpretación simultánea al español. Si desea escuchar la interpretación en español y está usando una computadora, va a haber un icono en la parte inferior de su pantalla, a la derecha, en forma de globo, que dice interpretación. Haga clic ahí ahora y seleccione español. Y si está utilizando su teléfono o el iPad, localice el menú de tres puntos seleccione interpretación de idiomas, elija español y finalizar. Gracias. Thank you. And now Dr. Maldonado, will you lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance? Please rise and face the flag. Put your right hand over your heart. Ready, begin. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, now we're on number five announcing <laughs> a closed session. The board voted unanimously 3-0 with two board members not present to appoint Ms. Suzette McCormick as principal at Santa Barbara Community Academy. And now we'll have the superintendent's report. Thank you so much, Vice President Wendy Sims Moten. Uh, board members, we have wrapped up summer of learning in elementary. We had about 20 days of summer school. Uh, and if you look at our social media, you'll notice we had a lot of fun activities, again, with children really engaged in joyful learning environments. Um, we also had a small uh, two-week high school summer school program for students to make up some credits. So I know that that just wrapped up last week as well. With that, I would like to um, ask Ms. Denise Alvarado to come to the podium and introduce herself at a meeting in uh, early July. You uh, approved her position as the new Executive Director of Curriculum and Instruction K through 12, or I should say now TK through 12, and we're really happy and excited to have Ms. Uh, Alvarado with us. She has she brings a wealth of knowledge to our school district that's going to just give us such great new perspective and new ideas and also curate the current great work that happens in Santa Barbara Unified. And we'd like to welcome her and have her say a few words about herself. Welcome, Denise. Thank you. Good evening, um, members of the board, Superintendent Maldonado and Santa Barbara community. 
As a servant leader, it is an honor to serve Santa Barbara Unified School District. My core values of integrity, teamwork, service, growth, and the leadership and my leadership are aligned with the district's mission and vision. I am impressed uh, through the work that you have already done that Santa Barbara is doing, your efforts towards diversity, equity, inclusion, and access. I know a significant amount of effort has, uh, of work has been done, and I want to be part of this team. I will actively work with teachers, support staff, administrators, parents, community partners in, in closing the achievement and opportunity gap to meet the needs of all students. I know firsthand some of the challenges that our students face in education. I was an emergent multilingual at the age of 12. But through the support of my teachers, I was quickly able to successfully complete my, with my, uh, compete with my peers and get involved in leadership roles at school as a newcomer to this country. I'm the first one in my family to graduate from high school and college. This would not be possible without the support I received from mentors and caring adults, such as teachers, instructional assistants, office staff, guidance technicians, and counselors at my campus. These were school staff that saw my potential and skills I did not know I had. I want to continue to make a positive difference in the lives of students just the way in which many educators made a difference in my life. This is the start of my 20th year in education, seven years as a high school math teacher, three years as a dean of academics, six years as an assistant principal, and three years as a principal in TK through 12, um, and in three different school districts. My genuine interest to serve this great community and my experience will allow me to immediately contribute to this wonderful team that I have already experienced for this last week. I am committed to leading with compassion, and courage, and to provide a high quality education in an equitable, nurturing, and student-centered environment where all students can thrive and reach their full potential. Lastly, I just want to thank you for providing me with this opportunity to serve. I want to thank also my family, my sister, my mother, who have been my number one supporters, and especially my daughter. My daughter's 27 years old, and she grew up watching me dedicating long, long hours to education, students, and the school communities that I have served for the past 19 years. Thank you and have a great evening. As you can see, we have amazing leadership coming to Santa Barbara, and I want to also thank Dr. Becchio and his team who's been working really hard at increasing our diversity, but also just uh, tapping into great new leaders. Um, Next, I'd like to update the board. Uh, Ms. Uh, Edison and others have been working on updating the technology cell phone uh, policies. There's a meeting coming up this week, July 28th, uh, of the committee that will be looking at technology and addressing mobile device use. It'll be made up of folks from both um, SBTA and uh, certificated staff and classified staff, school and district uh, administrators, students, families. And they'll be looking at some desired results, some best practices, and any proposed uh, board policy, if needed, updates on mobile device use. Additionally, last week we had um, English teachers from across uh, the three high schools, Dos Pueblos, San Marcos, Santa Barbara High School, meet with Ms. Allison Quijano, our English uh, teacher on special assignment, and participate in professional learning under, on universal design and just really getting to prepare the meet, to meet the needs of other students that will be in the heterogeneously grouped classrooms, also known as universal access. And lastly, we did receive um, nine proposals from different uh, companies that, that are um, wanting to come and do the racial climate assessment. There is a committee of people that have already been tapped to do the review of those proposals. And I want to remind everyone that we are in a cone of silence in that space as the committee reviews the proposals and decides on the, um, the service provider that will be used. We hope to have an update for you at our next meeting on August 9th. With that, um, that closes my superintendent update. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Maldonado. Um, now we will go to board member comments. Ms. Sims-Moten. 
Um, I don't have a lot of comments, but it's so good to see each of you in person. It was through Zoom and there, and it's just good to be back today. So I'll end it at that point and just looking forward to the rest of the meeting. Likewise, I'd just like to welcome you all. I know you've been here a few weeks now, but I just look forward to working with you and getting to meet you in person and have a cup of coffee or lunch, et cetera, to get to know each other. But thank you for uh, giving your time and energy to this district. Welcome. It's such a pleasure to see the whole cabinet. And I'm, I'm with your permission, I'd like to take a picture of the cabinet. And because I'm so, so grateful to have you on board, I'm looking forward to this coming school year, all the energy, the positivity that you bring. And I'm really very, very excited and happy that you are here joining us. So welcome to SB Unified. Uh, thank you. Um, also, I want to welcome all our new cabinet members and our returning members of this team, um, as well as my partner to the right, Kavya. I am certain that this is going to be a wonderful year, and I just want to thank all of you ahead of time for what I know you've already shown in terms of dedication and passion that you bring to our students and to our district. I also just want to do, as I have in the past, to give a little bit of an update on the emails that the board has received in the last month. That is from June 29th, actually, to July 19th. And uh, that's as a way of showing that and recognizing that our emails are also a form of public comment. So we received two on the use of Santa Barbara Junior High School fields. As you know, that was an issue at our last board meeting. Um, one on the college application process uh, and a new application for students. One email on COVID testing for the start of the year. One email on critical race theory. One email on the COVID policy uh, that exists at the district. One on the rules around public comment. One around technology use and the next steps uh, for our district and one on the Santa Barbara High School window replacement. We also received very interesting emails, uh, informational only, from the League of Women Voters, from Girls Inc., and many from the California School Boards Association. I do have one comment tonight, and it's on facility safety. Uh, especially in the last few weeks, we have been haunted by the tragedy at the elementary school in Evalde, Texas. And it's clear that no lives or fewer lives would have been lost if systems had been in place to prioritize keeping students safe, students and staff safe. I want to assert tonight that until gun access laws and practices really change in this country, schools have to do all that they can to keep students safe. And so I want to just start the conversation as we kick off this school year. We have to ask ourselves often, and deeply, are our school facilities as safe as they can be? Does this include our playgrounds and our open areas? Do emergency communication systems work at every school? Are lo doors locked always and are procedures in place to know that every person is identified who enters an SBUSD school? Have we done all that we can? Again, have we done all that we can? Thank you. Hi, I would just like to, well, first of all, thank Ms. sims Moten for opening the meeting. Um, we did have had the opportunity to attend a school board conference this last week, which had uh, wonderful speakers. Um, one of the panel discussions was about um, school board, about safety in the schools, and certainly gun violence, which we are seeing, you know, throughout the country. Um, in the news and such, and the ideas about behind like consistency and what can we do better um, just moving forward in, in terms of improvements in this next year that um, we can keep in mind. Um, along with that, there were also many uh, ideas and sharing from uh, school districts across the, the state um, about what they are doing, um, ways that the board and superintendent, cabinet, and students, you know, can all come together along with the parents and the community. And so I have many exciting ideas that, you know, 
um, that I'm sure my sister board members also experienced and, and the superintendent. Um, so going forward, as, as Ms. Ford said, you know, we definitely want to give that a lot of thought and, you know, and also a welcome to everyone here to, um, very excited to get to know everyone better and welcoming our, our student um, board member and have the participation of our students here. Um, I would like to go ahead and move to uh, student board comment. <laughs> Good evening, everyone. My name is Kavya Suresh, and I'm really excited to be here at my first board meeting as a student board member. Um, I'm a junior, or going to be a junior, at San Marcos Senior High School. I turned 16 and a half yesterday. I have to put the I have to put the half in there because that means I'm six months to 17. But um, I am really, really excited to be here tonight, and I'm really excited to meet all of the incredible adults that I'm going to get to work with this year, and the amazing board, which I'm already pretty familiar with and I'm also really excited now to introduce the two representatives from Dos Pueblos and Santa Barbara, Isa Mireles and Emily Pineda to talk a little bit about our vision for this year. Yes, you do. Okay. Testing. Oh, okay. Uh, hi, my name is Isabel Morales. I'm a senior at Dos Pueblos High School and DP's 2022-23 to 23 ASB student representative. Firstly, I'd just like to say that I am so excited to be working with the board as well as Kavya and Emily this coming school year. Um, I've been a, a, I've been a SB Unified student since I was in seventh grade. For the past six-ish years, uh, I have come to understand just how fortunate I am to be a part of our school district. Um, to be honest, if I had a nickel for every resource and opportunity that has been thrown my way, I probably wouldn't have to worry about student loans in the future. Um, yet, I have had a very different and very privileged life in comparison to so many students in Santa Barbara. Since I was in kindergarten, my parents, siblings, teachers, the entire community has supported my educational career. I was raised with the education system on my side. All of the opportunities and resources that SB Unified offers is geared towards students like me. It wasn't until the pandemic that I really saw how different school is for an English-speaking middle-class person like myself compared to many of my peers, which is why Kavya, Emily, and I will continue to focus on a more equitable and inclusive environment through being more involved with SB Unified students across all grade levels. We will strive to promote more student engagement by expanding opportunities for all individuals. And we will aim to create a culture with more civic and social engagement amongst the student body. Thank you. Good evening. It's a pleasure to be here. My name is Emily Pineda. I am a senior and the student representative for Santa Barbara High School. I chose to run for the student board member position because I believe that every student has a voice. And when I was running, my slogan was, a vote for me is a vote for our diversity. And I want to stick to that and I believe that is true. I believe that every student has a voice and I'm just here to emphasize it for them. I am the president of the Amnesty International Club at my high school, a student in the MAD Academy, and I'm a member of Santa Barbara High School's Don's Crew. Our goal is to strengthen relationships between students and administrators on the school um, and district level. We can do this by increasing student representation at ELAC, PTSA, site council meetings, and encouraging administrators to attend ASB and club meetings on their campuses. We all want students to know that we are happy to be here and able to support them. As a student representative, I could partner with ASB and other clubs to host an in-person trivia night where students could get to know each other better and win prizes. I can visit various clubs and ask for their help on content for the monthly newsletter. This would also give me the opportunity to talk about initiatives the school board is working on. Our goal is to improve communication by sharing information and involving students in making decisions about what they want the school board to know. We would like to improve student admin communication to make sure activities on our campuses are available for a diverse student population. We can encourage students from our schools to give us their concerns 
and we can increase activity on the student board member Instagram to make good use of social media. We can spread awareness on the student board member position to create a safe space for all students to share their input and potentially run for the future position. Thank you for your time. So as you can see, I am working with two amazing individuals um, who are the representatives for their respective campuses, but I'm also working with the 12, 13,000 students of the Santa Barbara Unified School District every single day, and I'm so blessed and fortunate to be here, and I want to sincerely thank Issa and Emily for showing up and showing out and always, always supporting me, and I think we all know how, how wild last school year was, to say the least, but I think we have a vision, we have a goal, and we have a purpose for this year, and I think the most important thing is that our purpose comes from our experience, and our purpose comes from our, our passion. And so I'm really excited to see the change that we make this year, and I'm really excited to work with, like I said, the amazing adult allies that I have in this room, and the amazing students that I have with me to, you know, have the best school year yet. So let's do this. Go, go SB Unified. <laughs>
So with that, we will move on to action agenda number one, the resolution. Ms. Hernandez. That was impressive. We got through all of those consent items. Good job. Okay, so the bond report, here we go. Okay, good evening board members, Dr. Maldonado. I'm gonna take this off. Ah, I can breathe, okay. Uh, we're gonna talk tonight about our bond program, um, just to get us prepared to sell the next series of bond money. Um, I, have, I have here with me at least one of them. Um, so um, I think we're going to get one more, but anyway, this is uh, Danielle Aruda from KNN. Um, just for once I go through my report, if you have any questions, she's going to be the one to help us out. Next slide, please. Okay, so, you know, we are so fortunate here at Santa Barbara Unified to have a community that cares so deeply about our students. And we know this because the voters have voted to make a priority to make sure that our facilities are beautiful, modern, safe, and great for our students. And they've done that by approving and voting for the bond measures. And so tonight I'm going to talk to you a little bit about our bond program. And also we're going to um, discuss selling the last series in our bond programs um, so that we can do, get, get going on that. And in order to do that, we have one sort of housekeeping item, which is uh, approval of two tax levy resolutions. And I'll talk about that. And then I'm going to just talk, just show you some pictures of some of the amazing things that we've been able to do with this money to help our students in our facilities. So next slide, please. OK. So what are GO bonds, uh, or GO bonds? Um, municipalities or cities with a government, they um, borrow money, and they pay it back with principal and interest at a certain date with a municipal bond. The particular kind of bonds that we're talking about here tonight are GO bonds or general obligation bonds. Those are the ones that we usually have to help out schools. Um, they are voter approved debt secured by property taxes. The monies collected from the local property taxes are used to repay the debt. And homeowners can see um, what that looks like with each of the bond measures on their property bills. So if you're a homeowner and you have your property taxes, you can see right on there the measures and how much um, each year it, that we pay back. Okay. So these bonds are usually used to finance infrastructure projects and they're used to, to help school districts with their facilities and their equipment. Um, and for us, we have been using these bonds on our school sites to um, replace old portables, to build brand new beautiful classrooms, to um, work together with the community to build some really amazing things for science, for VADA, for CTE programs, and we'll look a little bit at that a little bit later. Um, and also the solar projects that you're seeing across all of our, our schools and our district. So um, we have really put this money to good use. What's great about GEO bonds is that there's no impact to the district's general fund. It's separate. Um, in order to have a GEO bond, you have to have a citizen's bond oversight committee who really looks at the projects that you're doing and helps to have some fiscal um, oversight. So um, I'm just going to put this out to the community. If anyone would like to be on this citizen's bond oversight committee, we are always looking for folks. Um, and you know, get a hold of me. You can email me or on our website. There's also a, a place where you can go find some information about it. But we're really looking for you if you want to be part of this great um, community and the things that we're doing. Um, we do have to have fiscal audits, um, just like our regular school audits. They audit these bond programs too. 
And um, one thing that to understand is that bond sales cannot be used for salaries or operating expenses. It's really for our facilities and our equipment. Okay, next slide, please. This one's a little complicated. I'll try to make it not so. Um, so in our general obligation bond program, here's kind of an overview. So before 2011, actually back to 1995, we had um, five total bonds, um, three that were in the elementary school district and two that were in the secondary high school area. We have no remaining authorization on those. Um, so those are, are pretty much done. So that's that top section under pre-unification. And then May 24th, 2011, we unified, which meant that our, you know, our elementary and our secondary all came together and we are united. So going forward after that, we had two bond authorizations. Um, one is Measure I and one is Measure J, and they have different names for them. The Measure I is the Santa Barbara Unified School District um, election 20, it, that happened in 2016. That was $135 million. Um, and then, and that is, we use that specifically for the uh, secondary. Then the next one, Measure J, is, has a very long name that's called Santa Barbara Unified School District um, School Facilities Improvement District Number One. They sometimes call it SFID Number One. And so that was for $58 million. So both of these two bonds um, are, were both done in uh, 2016. They have different amounts. They have you know, different amounts when we go to sell them. Um, what's left on each of them, the measure I, there's 35 million left, and that's what we're going to try to um, get going on, get selling so we can get that money to finish our projects. And the $58 million one for measure J, there's 18 million left on that, and that's typically mostly just elementary schools. Okay, next slide, please. This is a little bit easier um, to just see the current ones that we have. So again, that Santa Barbara unified the measure I, secondary. Um, one of the things to understand when we sell bonds is we don't just do it all in one big chunk. We, we, they have to, this is my technical term, chunk. <laughs> so um, they have to be done in increments because there's an obligation to um, make sure that you expend 85% of what each time you sell bonds, 85% of that within three years. So imagine if we sold $135 million and then had to spend that all in three years, and then comes COVID, and then comes supply chain issues, and then comes inflation. It would be, you know, really, really difficult. So instead, we do them in smaller chunks, or what we are, they're really called as a series. So that first one, Series A, we sold in 2017 for $50 million, and so it has um, a call, the first call is in 2027. Series B, we sold another $50 million, and that first call is in 2028, and now tonight we're starting the ball rolling to, to sell the next one, Series C, for $35 million. And the same thing can be said for SFID number one, which is, again, the elementaries. Um, so the Series C on that one is $18 million. So we'd like to get, get that money in. So get going on that. Next slide, please. Okay. So again, the, the larger one that had the $35 million left on it, um, we anticipate that on September 26th, the district will issue the remaining $35 million. And the process to start that is actually at the August 23rd board meeting. So I will, we will come back and we will have a resolution on August 23rd for you to, you know, approve the bond sales. And once, once that happens, we'll get, get that little um, 35 million piece going. Um, the preliminary structure for um, how much it's going to look like on everybody's property taxes is not to exceed $11.49 per every $100,000 of assessed value. So quick math, if your home, if your assessed value of your home is a million dollars, then on your property tax you would see annually 
$114.90, and it would say right next to it, Measure I. Okay, next slide, please. And this is the other one, Measure J, it's for the $18 million. So the next Series C on that, we would do at the same time that we would do I, just to, you know, sell them both at the same time. Again, on September 26th, we would start the process with a resolution on October 23rd. And for this one, um, it would be $13.15. So again, if your property was assessed at a million dollars, it would be $131.50. And it would say next to it, Measure J. Okay, next slide, please. This is the, um, the summary of how the process works. So um, I would say tonight, July 19th, but we're going to, you know, that was last week. But we have the board meeting of which time we are seeking a tax levy resolution, two of them, for each measure. And then on the 23rd, we would bring back the disclosure documents um, for your approval to get the sales going. Um, it would go through, you know, County Board of Supervisors meeting, and then the, the bonds would actually sell um, on September 26th. And by the time that we would actually see that money come into the district in order to use it to, for our facilities, it would be, you know, mid-October. So it takes a little while, um, but we're, we're right on track. Next slide, please. All right, so why do investors love our bonds? We've got a couple of really good reasons. We have a good assessed valuation right for, uh, rate for our properties in our district. I'll show you that real quickly. We've got a really good high credit rating. And we use the money to create amazing facility projects for our students. It's all good news stuff. Next slide, please. This is what it's really hard to see. I'm just going to kind of talk it through real quick. This is what our district's assessed value looks like. So when, what this means is that all of the um, property, properties within um, Santa Barbara Unified's district that help to fund these property taxes have on a consistent base gone up. Our property values tend to go up. Are there times when they come down? Sometimes they do, but on a regular consistent basis, our property values go up. So if you just look at kind of a compounded annual growth rate, um, right now, currently the estimate is for three years, it's like 4.8% up to 5.2%. So a good strong 5% increase every year for both of the bonds. Um, the left side there is the um, measure I and the right side is measure J. Next slide, please. And the other part about it is our credit rating is really good. Um, you look at the Moody's and Standards and Poor's, or what most people call S&P, um, and see where, where we fall. Um, for Moody's, we're at the very high credit quality, low risk of default of AA1. And for S&P's, we're at AA. Now, um, some of the reasons why we have such high credit is uh, one of them is that strong assessed valuation growth. So, um, there, and that's pretty resilient. Like I say, we tend to go up in our property values. Um, going down is, is really rare, so we go up. Um, we have strong wealth and income factors in our, in our community. We are a community funded district and they like that. That's, um, in other words, where property taxes pays for our schools. We have good financial policies and practices, and we have strong overall financial positions, and we do have strong reserves. Next slide, please. So this is the part where um, we're talking about the tax levy request. So this, get my notes on that. Okay, so when um, districts are going to sell bonds, there's a cutoff time at the county for, at the county assessor usually needs that information by, I think it's April. So since we're doing this after April, we have to have a resolution that says that we yes indeed do want to sell bonds and the, the county then does a, they, that's when they determine the tax amount and the cessation um, part for, that goes on everybody's property taxes. So in order to do that, we have to have these two resolutions for each measure. And that's what I'm bringing to you tonight. 
Next slide. Okay, and finally the fun stuff. These are just some of the pictures of some of the amazing things that we have been doing um, with the bond money. We have taken um, old portables and we have removed them and replaced them with modern, um, high-tech, amazing, beautiful classrooms. And I know that you've had a chance to see some of them as we've been going along. Uh, that's a picture of Adams Elementary there. And we have done, so, um, like the top one that's still in, um, kind of in the middle at the top is Dos Pueblos, the CTE building. Um, I, ha I need to go out there and see how it's coming along because I just hear amazing things about that place. Um, it's going to be really, really neat. Um, we have solar panels at most of our sites, and we are getting ready to turn them on in some cases. Um, we have some wonderful places for our students to have athletics and be outside. Um, case in point is our beautiful Peabody Stadium. And another case in point is the Santa Barbara Junior High kitchen, gym, and multi-space. It is, that kitchen is fantastic and it just feels really good to be in there. So um, we have a lot more to come and um, we're just really excited at everything that we're, we're doing. So that's it for my presentation. And if you have any questions, we've got Daniel. Um, do we have any public comment? No? Okay. Um, Ms. Alvarez? Thank you, Ms. Hernandez. Excellent presentation. Uh, this question, I don't know if it's for you or for Danielle. How does the current interest rate market impact the rates? And also, what opportunities are there to save taxpayers money? Are these bonds eligible to refi or are they not? Go ahead, and Dan. would you like me to take that or yes, would you? Go. Okay, great. So a couple of different questions being asked there. Uh, I'll first start off with interest rates and how that has impacted the district. Uh, thankfully, uh, the district has done a very good job of managing their tax rate and really what will affect the ability to issue more bonds or move around the structure based off of interest rates will be how much capacity we can fit certain bonds in certain areas. So thankfully, the district is not a constrained district. As Kim pointed out, there's very high um, assessed valuation growth that has taken place not only in the short term, but also the long term. So although there has been volatility in the market, as we all know, there's been a lot of geopolitical pressure as well as inflation that many of us have been experiencing domestically. So yes, that will have an impact on the district's structuring of these bonds. However, will it uh, cause the bonds not to be priced because of high interest rates? I don't believe that that will be the case. So I hope that that answers the first portion of uh, your question. The second portion uh, regarding refunding, yes. These bonds will have a 10-year optional redemption, which means within the next, once the bonds are issued in 22, um, beginning in 2032, we will go ahead and have the opportunity to refund the bonds for taxpayer savings. Uh, so of course, if we had a crystal ball right now, that would be helpful. And we obviously could do a great job of projecting out what those taxpayer savings would be in the future. But unfortunately, you know, time will tell there. Um, is there an opportunity to change this structure or make this structure as efficient as possible? I believe that was uh, the third and final point. So actually, um, that is what this tax levy resolution request is for. If we thumb back to the initial um, structure that we saw um, on the earlier slides, you can see that the tax rate structure actually peaks in the early part um, of the years in 2023. I'm sorry, actually it is level in 2023 and thereon. In order for us to be able to levy taxes for the 2023 year, we need to go ahead and request that the county levy a tax for this potential bond issue. The more bonds that we can fit in the early part of the curve where interest rates are lowest, 
will result in a more efficient and cost-effective structure for the district. So this tax levy resolution is step one in trying to make this as efficient as possible for taxpayers. Also, since the district has a very strong credit rating, uh, AA1 from Moody's and AA S&P, that will also help in lowering or keeping the cost of funds lower. Obviously, the more attractive your credit rating is, or for instance, if we bring this to personal, a, a credit score, the higher your credit score is, you know, the less it's going to cost you to borrow money. So um, across the board, I believe the district is doing everything that they can to not only have an efficient structure, but also achieve the lowest cost of funds so that the taxpayer obviously does not have a uh, very burdensome uh, tax rate moving forward. Thank you. I appreciate uh, the thoroughness of your answer. Thank you. Absolutely. Hey, Ms. Caps. Thanks, Ms. Hernandez, for this presentation. And I appreciate getting a bit of a history on the bond process. Uh, I was happy to help with that uh, campaign in 2016. And just uh, it's good to remember that I think the, the percentage of voters that supported this these funds was something like 68 percent. So to now see that in action when you drive around town and see mm -hmm. what we're actually doing with it is really uh, inspiring. Um, one element of those bonds um, was the armory uh, that people were really excited about, the board at the time was excited about. If Could you just give a quick, I know it's a big question, yeah. but if you could just give a thumbnail status update, because I get asked from time to time sort of what's going on with the armory. Right, so right now we um, haven't done a lot of uh, improvements on the armory yet. Part of the reason is the costs are so high right now and we're really more focusing on our classrooms and the things that our students are using directly. Um, but we do have money that bond money set aside to to work on the armory. We have some uh, areas where it's going to need to be cleaned up, like hazmat wise. <laughs> there's there's some areas that really need, you know, abatement and a lot of things that are, um, you know, that's why we don't have students there. That's why we don't have people in there really because it's. Um, I'm not going to say it's not safe, but it's it definitely needs to be cleaned up. Um, so. Uh, currently, we are using just parts of it for um, our mechanics and to store our, you know, trucks and, and parking and those kinds of things as we are sort of trying to put together a plan of what it is we're, we want to do with the armory. It's a beautiful space, um, and we're hoping that we can do something really great with it, but right now it's, it's kind of a little bit lower on um, the project list because we're doing other, other things that are taking our time. Yeah, thank you. I just want to, again, because different folks were here, but we really, when, we, when the, the board at the time um, put our support behind the inclusion of the armory um, in the bond, but also payment for it afterwards, um, just to ensure that there's a robust stakeholder process determining how the how the armory gets used. The potential is just so great. Yep. I understand that the the costs are a lot higher, but I just I think it you know this was kind of on track before not kind of it was on track prior to the pandemic, and I hope that in due time we can revisit that and be able to involve the community in determining how we best use that incredible space. I think that's a great idea. Thanks. Any other questions or concerns? Okay. Um, seeing that, that do I have Ms. Fort? <laughs> have a motion motion uh, I'd like to make a motion for the first resolution resolution number two 2022 23 04 the resolution requesting the Board of Supervisors of the County of Santa Barbara to establish tax rate for measure I bonds of the Santa Barbara Unified School District expected to be sold during fiscal year 2022 23 and authorizing necessary actions in connection therewith. second Okay, um, all in favor, please raise your hand and say aye. 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 Okay, so do I have a motion on the second resolution? Is that, that was it, right? No, oh. there's two. There's two. Okay. Ms. Alvarez? So moved. Okay. 
Second. Uh, all in favor, please raise your hand and say aye. 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 Okay, um, both measures um, passed unanimously. Thank you. Thank you to both of you. Moving right along, we're going to let's see. Action agenda G number two, approval of the resolution, declaration of need for fully qualified educators. Ms. Peak. There we go, sorry about that. Good evening, Board President Munoz, Board of Education, and Dr. Maldonado. The item you have in front of you this evening is the Declaration of Need for Fully Qualified Educators. The Commission on Teacher Credentialing requires that this document be submitted on a yearly basis. If we anticipate hiring any teachers who may have a credential but may not be fully credentialed. An example of this would be a teacher who's from out of state but they do not hold a CLAD permit. As an FYI, the CLAD permit is the cross-cultural language an academic development certificate which authorizes our teachers to teach English learners. Before the CTC can issue these sorts of permits, we as a district need to have the declaration of need approved by the Board of Education as an action item. So please let me know if I can answer any questions for you. Okay, I'm assuming there's no public comment on this. Okay, um, Ms. Sims Moten. <coughs> yes, thank you, Ms. Peek. Mm -hmm. uh, does this, I know it's a declaration to know that we do have a need, but are we including the, the incoming need that we may have for TK teachers? Is that, will we be able to, would this declaration cover that as well? It could if we had a need to hire teachers that were, how do I want to put this? So for instance, if we hired a teacher that had a single subject credential but had the units to cover, we'd sign them up for a limited assignment permit and that would be covered under this. This is also a document that we can revise at any time. Okay, because as I was um, just kind of doing some research that that's an incoming need that's, that's coming, yes, right? Definitely. Um, and, and some of it is whereas you're now going to need 24 ECE credits if you don't have that as opposed to the 12. So I was just wondering if, if that's also being taken into consideration, yeah, that this, need that's no, along with that. Yes, for some of those it's likely that we would be looking at well, there's a variety of things we could be looking at in order to get those teachers credentialed, so. Okay, and are we working with our local higher ed, such as oh, yes. uh, Antioch? Because um, Antioch and Santa Barbara City College, mostly that are looking at that. Yeah, Cal State Channel Islands as well is okay. a big one. Great, all right, thank you. Sure. Okay, uh, any other questions? No, okay, um, do I have a motion? I move that we approve the declaration of need as presented. Uh, and did you want a separate motion for the resolution, or is that in one motion? It's just one. It's one motion. One motion. I approve that we move the declaration of need as presented, as well as the resolution. Second. Okay. Uh, all in favor, raise your hand and say aye. 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 Okay. Um, Thank passes you. unanimously. Thanks. Thank you. Okay, we will go to the action agenda number three, uh, second reading and approval of board policy 1312.3. Good evening, board. Um, this is just a second reading. This board policy had already come forth for a first reading. Um, there wasn't any major changes. It's just updating it to the board policy and law. Yep. Any questions? Yes. Um, Ms. Alvarez? Quick question. This policies, are they in line with our CSBA uh, suggested policies and then we update it to fit our district? Is that how that works? Yes. Okay. Thank you. So the, with this specifically, the, so again, we were under a federal program monitoring review. They said that we could use CSBA as a guide except for this specific policy. So they said to specifically take what they update at CDE and to apply it directly into our policy. 
Um, the second thing I'd actually bring up as well, um, as requested I, from uh, board member uh, Ford, is that you'll notice that we did highlight the changes as well as showing you and giving you the one to be approved. So, Thank you. Okay, any other questions? Okay, uh, do I have a motion? So moved. Second. Okay, um, all in favor, please raise your hand and say aye. 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 Okay, uh, passes unanimously. Thank you. Okay, so we'll go on to coming events. Dr. Maldonado. I do want to let the board know and we will be sending out a note uh, after this meeting that we have an event on August 10th uh, at the Historical Museum between 5.30 uh, to 7 where we will be inviting our community members along with yourselves to a social to meet all our new leaders some of our cabinet members present here today and also uh, some of our new principals that have been selected. So please save the date. We'll be sending that out soon. Thank you, Dr. Maldonado. That'll be great. Looking forward to that. Um, anyone else? Uh, events? Okay. Um, if you, oh, yes, go ahead. <laughs> One more. I can't believe I forgot this. Uh, also on August 5th, uh, our school district will have a float for the Fiesta Parade, which I hear is an amazing event in Santa Barbara. It'll be my first time experiencing it. You'll get more details about that as well. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, future agenda items. So our next meeting, it seems incredible to be saying this at 6.30 in the evening. <laughs> um, let's see, Tuesday, August 9th, will be the regular board meeting at 5.30 with in-person and virtual participation. Um, with that, well, oh, go ahead. Dr. Dr. Maldonado, I'm sorry, I forgot to ask you a couple of items ago. When is the old staff in service? What date is that? The all staff with teachers is August 16th. August 16th, oh, thank you. Okay, uh, with that, we will go ahead and adjourn at 6.30 p.m. Until next time, thank you so much. <laughs>